rematch of one of the greatest fights in UFC history. John Jones versus Alexander Gustafson is on. Wow. Sway in the morning, Shay 4-5. Tracy G. Yeah. DB, DJ Wonder. I know you can remember the first time this guest came to the show. And I was not really familiar with the UFC at all. But I remember taking a picture with him. And in my bar area at my home, every time I take a picture with someone, I do it the old school way. I mm -hmm. go to like CVS and I get it printed out. I pay 89 cents and I get the <laughs> picture printed out. A dollar nine if you want like a five by seven or, you know, bigger yeah, yeah, every yeah. time you go up. So I got this nice picture printed out and I went to Walmart, got a frame, put it up in my bar. And my husband said to me, oh, shit, you met him? And I was like, you know this guy? This this is UFC. It's not regular boxing. He's like, are you kidding me? Are you crazy? This dude is nice. He's incredible. I think one of his brothers in the NFL, he started breaking down this whole story. And I was like, I don't know about all that. He just seemed really humble. He was cool. He's a big dude. Looked like he could have been in the NFL. And right after that, I feel like I just started to watch this man's career. And every time you heard the UFC, you heard his name right along with it. I'm talking about the one and only John Bones Jones. He is Yo. here. Welcome back What's to the show. On? Thank you so much. How you been? Oh, man, I've been great. I've been so good. Yeah. Glad, glad to be back fighting for a world title. Fighting for a world title. Yes, this will be my 10th world title. Wow. So, really? Yeah, yep. So feeling blessed. Glad to be back in this opportunity, back, back in this spot. Yeah. December 29th is when the fight will take place in Nevada. Yes. I'm always curious as to, because for us, we get up every morning, we do morning radio, and it's a grind. We have so much information in our heads. We have to be to bed at a certain time to make the time to be live on air. All these different things go into play. But in terms of what you do, how do you prepare? You said this is the 10th world title belt you're going for. Mm -hmm. The fight is a month out. Just, you know, give yep. a day or two, a, yeah. a week or two. Um, how are you preparing for this? Uh, so, yeah, right now the fight is uh, it's December 29th. It's about five weeks away. It's going to be in uh, Nevada, the T-Mobile Arena. And uh, I'm really excited. Um, uh, like I said, it's the 10th world title. And... Uh, and uh, I'm fighting a guy that I've fought before. This, yeah. is, this will be my second rematch. Uh, this guy named is Alexander Gustafsson. He's from Sweden. Uh, he was the Swedish national boxing champion. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's he's a really special talent. Uh, great hands, great footwork. And uh, uh, the last time I fought this guy, actually, the, the fight was extremely close. Mm -hmm. um, I won by uh, unanimous decision, but uh, a lot of people think he actually won the fight. Won the fight. Yeah, and uh, this is going to be uh, our rematch. And... Uh, just a great opportunity. I've been preparing for the fight, just training four times a day. Um, four every, times a day? Four, yeah. What four. time's the first one start? Uh, I start around 9 a.m. And uh, I do, you know, I'll do like live fighting first thing in the morning. And then uh, early afternoon, I'll do uh, some type of strength and conditioning. Okay. And then late afternoon, I'll do a private with a with a, a different martial arts trainer, whether it's jujitsu or wrestling or boxing that day. Uh, and then at night I'll do uh, more live uh, more live fighting or uh, film studies. So yeah, it's wow. it's a lot of work. I'm totally committed to it. How many hours in between each, because you said strength conditioning, live yeah, fighting, yeah. I would be dying. How many I, hours I in between? <laughs> I'm dead right now, here. I, I try to recover for about, uh, about two hours in between. Uh, each practice, uh, sometimes I get uh, bigger gaps. Uh, but, yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of commitment. My life right now is literally uh, just training, uh, training, recovery, hydration, and, and just, you know, being with family. So yeah. what food? You said, hi, I'm hearing water, baby, but what <laughs> yeah. about food? Food, yeah. Uh, luckily, uh, my fiance, she's been my nutritionist uh, throughout uh, the majority of my career, and she does a great job. Uh, you know, she's fortunate enough to be a stay-at-home mom, so okay. uh, she does a real good job of just uh, in between my training sessions, just making sure that there's always fresh, uh, you know, fresh, uh, you know, high nutrition uh, meals for me to okay. just remain at the top of the game. Wow, DB. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Just on rolling off of the uh, training session because this is not just one of the biggest fights. This was one of the biggest fights in UFC history, and now you're facing them again. And I think yeah. a lot of fans are also excited because of the matchup. You guys are almost the same height, same weight. You know, you're not fighting somebody who's shorter or has like you know a shorter arm reach. Yeah. So what's your preparation? I know you can't give away like all the secrets, but yeah. what's your preparation for this specific fighter with with his height and weight and and you know that sort of matchup? Right. Yeah. So uh. So um. Yeah. The first fight. 
you know, I kind of downplay it. Uh, I was just saying we fought before with the first fight. It's widely considered one of the most entertaining uh, UFC fights in the history of the sport. Um, me and this Alexander Gustafson guy are extremely well well matched. We're very uh, we're he's a little bit taller than me. Normally, I'm always uh, taller than the guys I fight against. Mm -hmm. um, I have longer arms than him, but uh, you know he has really good footwork. Um, and he's one of the best boxers in, in light heavyweight history in our sport. And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, the first fight was hell, really. Um, great to watch, terrible to be a part of. Yeah. Um, and uh, the way I'm preparing this time is just uh, just making sure that I have uh, superior cardio and uh, taking them very seriously. Uh, the first time we fought, uh, everyone was saying, you know, this guy fights a lot like John Jones. You know, he's like the Swedish version of John Jones. And and I was hearing that a lot, and I was saying to myself, well, he may fight a lot like a lot like me, but he's not me. And uh, there's no way I should lose this fight. And so the first time, I I, uh, I kind of took him lightly, and I almost lost the fight. I was extremely uh, an entertaining one to watch. And this time, we we're just taking him very seriously. We know uh, what he possesses and how mm -hmm. dangerous he is. And uh, and uh, we believe uh, we'll finish him this time. So you mentioned you always being taller. We have you listed here six five and two hundred and five pounds. I think about your brothers. I think about Arthur. I think about Chandler. Is it just genetics in your family? Like people would just faint. Like you can, you have yeah. kids. You have three boys, and then you just spit three out boys. two football players, and then a, a UFC champion fight. Is is this genetics? Yeah, it's that definitely genetics. Uh, us Joneses grow to be real big. You know, my little brother Chandler. He's about six foot six, uh, about two hundred and 50 pounds and he, right now he's the number one defensive end in the NFL yes. leading the NFL in sacks yep. congratulations yeah. shout out to that's his little brother, <laughs> little brother. Yeah, my, I, I call him my younger brother because right. he's actually a lot bigger than me right uh, so uh, yeah, uh, so Chandler, shout out to Chandler with the Arizona Cardinals, yeah. num number fifty-five, and then my older brother Arthur. Uh, Arthur won the Super Bowl with the Ravens, retired from the Colts, and uh, right now he's about he's about three ten and about six four. So wow. yeah, we got big boys. My grandmother is where it came from. She was about six foot one, mm -hmm. and uh, and one of the greatest athletes I've ever known. You know, she yeah. she was a first lady at the church, and oh, nice. to this day she's still shouting and running up and down the aisles oh. and stuff. So uh, yeah, it definitely stems from the grandmother. Could you imagine growing up in their hood and be like, I'm gonna go get my brothers, I'll be right yeah. back. I'll be like, I'm going the other way. I, don't want, to I, want, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Mike Mills has a question. Yeah, question for you, speaking of your brothers uh being in football, I'm always curious about the mentality of a UFC fighter. So what was it about that drew you to UFC versus going uh, and playing football? Uh, you know, quite frankly, I, I I sucked at football. I was a really terrible football player. I uh I was about six four and weighed about about 170 pounds in high school, and uh, and uh, they had me as a defensive lineman. And I had a wrestling coach tell me, and I never started on the team. I had a wrestling coach tell me, he said, "John, if you were, to, if you were to commit yourself to this wrestling team and really really focus and dedicate your young life, I, I can guarantee you a scholarship and, and just a way to, to do something with your life." And wow. uh, I took it seriously, and I, and I just you know from that time forward, I, I went to summer camps and doing everything I can to just get a little bit better at wrestling. And sure enough, I ended up getting a scholarship, and it led me to uh, led me to find a mixed martial arts. So. Are there politics in wrestling on a high school level and college level like there are with basketball and football? No, no, okay. no, there's there's not. No, nah, it's just not big enough. The, wrestling doesn't really draw money, you know, and I, I realize mm. that's where you get into boosters and, and a lot of politics is when people see future money and mm. and uh, there's no money in wrestling. No sneaker really. deals in wrestling. No, yeah, nah. no. No, no uh, contracts <laughs> with them bathing suits no that group, the men wear. No yeah, bathing suits. suits. <laughs> it's like, it's like a one piece. That's how you feel? Yeah, no, it's, 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 Damn. No, I'm just saying it's like a Funky one piece, like it pulls their whole, they're growing together. It's like, wow, these dudes are like squeezing each other with that. Oh <laughs> man, she's you taking it that way. But this was your high school days, y'all. This was high school. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not judging. You're on your own, Heather. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't fight. Don't fight. Yeah. Uh, 888 742. Because Tracy has a question for you too. We're gonna get you in the yeah. comeback. And citizens, right. if you have questions for John, he's here hanging out with us. 888 742 3345. Hey, to the right, John Bones Jones is here, hey. and we talking about Fight Night, December 29th, um, Jones versus Gustafsson. Did I say his name? Yeah, you right. said it close I, enough. I don't want to disrespect him. They already accusing me of disrespecting John <laughs> in here, talking about the outfits, and I'm calling it an outfit. It's a uniform, correct? It's, it's called a singlet, <laughs> a, a wrestling singlet. Oh, a wrestling oh, singlet. Singlet. Oh, singlet. Singlet. Yeah, singlet. It's so a one piece. Yeah. <laughs> singlet. Damn. Spandex. 
<laughs> onesie. You call it whatever. <laughs> call it what you want to call it. I, obviously, you're not feeling the singlet. It's just wild. And it's I think different. we were talking about why the music we're playing, what we were talking about, citizens. Welcome to the show. If you're just now joining us, it's just that the fact that culturally, I think that's what it is. You know, the track dudes, well, they would get their sneakers. You come out Christmas, first pair of sneakers, you race on the block as a hood thing. The fact those dudes go play track. To his point, his brothers, the big dudes, they go out, they play football. The tall dudes play basketball. You didn't find that many men of color uh, wrestling. You it's just true. didn't didn't find it. So, and then to you added another layer to it about the money that may not be associated with wrestling because again in basketball there's sneakers there's the jerseys there's right. so many things associated with it you don't never hear about the singlet is it, the, yeah, the singlet the being the fastest selling singlet <laughs> ever uh, on Black yeah. Friday probably, <laughs> probably will, 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 will never happen and then ever. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's different uh, growing up as a black male you know deciding to be on the wrestling team uh, it's not something that's very common it's not it's not uh, a lot of money into it there's yeah there's not a lot of uh there's not a lot of like typically you know there's not a lot, a lot of like black heroes in, in this sport oh, wow. uh, for for a young black man to look up to like me for example there's like maybe five great black wrestlers before me that that i could actually look t uh to and Can say you wow name I'm one a, like who uh I, let's see there's a kevin randleman uh there's a guy named kevin jackson okay um Honestly, that's that's the only two I could name right now. Wow. Yeah. So just Kevin's um, okay. Yeah, just Kevin's. Yeah. So <laughs> when, when I made the decision to to wrestle, you know, it was it was one of those decisions you had to just be an individual, be strong in your decision, and not really worry about how people judged it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, I, I went with it, and I got made fun of a lot about doing it. You know, yeah. like you know, you got these tights on this dude, all wrestling, all sweating on you, and all this. <laughs> I had to I had to hear all that stuff. Right. Uh, but it's funny because the same guys who made fun of it in high school are the same guys who are asking how can I get a ticket Tickets. to my pay-per-view yeah. fights wow. now. Yeah, so it uh yeah, you know, hard work pays off and being your being an individual, being yourself and and you know, doing what what makes you feel good. You know what I'm wondering about John because for for team sports, I feel like players can be um friends even though they're in opposition because you get traded, you might end up here and there. But when it's one-on-one -on -one contact, is it difficult to then create some type of kinship with the person that you're going to be throwing yeah. down? Yeah, it's a little different uh, when, you, when you're a mixed martial arts fighter and, and you're competing against uh, someone one-on-one. -on -one, uh, just because everything is a lot more personal. Right. Like when mm -hmm. you are on a team sport and you're talking about reasons that you're going to win, you talk about, you know... It, 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 it's it's not as personal where people in our sport say, oh, I'm I'm going to win because this guy, you know, he can't keep his shit together mm -hmm. or this guy, he, you know, he's overweight or this guy, he's this or that or this. It, it's always it's always in a personal attack, you right. know. And so, uh, yeah, respect is, is easily lost in, in, in MMA, you mm -hmm. know, and, and when you know someone's preparing to hurt you. Or, and to scar you permanently, you know, it's just friendship is a weakness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it can be a weakness. Yeah, you definitely don't want to hold anything back when you're out there competing against someone who's trying to hurt you on national TV. We yeah. got it. We got Chaz on the line from Indiana, 888-742-3345, if you want to uh, say what up to John. Chaz, what's good, baby? Hey, Chaz. Hey, Chaz. Yeah, how, how you doing, Heather? How Hi. you doing, John? Hey, how you doing, boss? Yes, sir. Doing well. All right. I uh, just wanted to call you, man, and, and let you know that you are my absolute favorite fighter of all time. Oh, thank you uh, so much, man. I, 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 miss, I, I miss you. I miss you tremendously. You know, I, I hate watching the UFC and watching these young men talking about how good they are when the best fighter that's probably ever lived is currently not on the or, or not active right now. So. Right. When you get back in there, I can't. I can't wait to hear him then. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, five weeks away, man. I, I feel like I got a lot to prove, and uh, and uh, that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I've always done is go out there and perform and, and put on. Uh, thank you for your call. You're a citizen of Sway in the morning. We got Sterling on the line from Portland. What's up, Sterling? How you doing? Hey, hey Sterling. Hey, Sterling. Hey, hey. Good morning, y'all. How y'all doing, man? How you doing, Mr. Jones? What's up, Sterling? I don't I just wanted to say thank you, man. You won me a lot of damn money, man. Hey. Betting, betting you, bro. <laughs> a lot of people always, every year, man, especially you was going through your thing, man. People's always doubting you and everything. Yeah. I was always putting money on it. Like, you going to get them, son. You going to get them. And you got them, man. Every I, time, man, you never let it down. And also for black wrestlers, man, I used to wrestle in high school, bro. 
I I know how it feels, man. You got there. People say the same thing about the onesie and all that, man. Yeah. I got all that jokes and everything. Yeah. But the thing about the cool part about it was is that it made a wrestling actually was a very good sport for me, man. I just yeah. um I now I started that I started that football too, bro. And uh, I I got it from everybody, my family, all the neighborhood kids, man. Yeah. He had to go to a whole other school and stuff, you know. But um, wrestling is a very good, very good uh, discipline is. thing, man. You know, it, I, I wouldn't without that sport, man. I don't think I even quite got through high school. I, I, I strongly, I strongly, strongly recommend it. It is, a, it is a great sport. It, uh, it's a sport where it's, I grew up underprivileged. And so, mm. you know, it's a sport where you don't need money to to succeed at it. You know, you just got to buy wrestling shoes. Everything else is provided for you. Oh, wow. And, uh, man, I, I really sh- encourage, uh, I encourage all kids to give it a try, but especially young black men, you yeah. know, it, it, it changed my life. And, and the competition is, um, uh, it's not as strong, you know, in the urban community, a lot of times, you know, you got, you got everybody wanting to be the next basketball player. You got right. everybody wanting to be the next football player and only, you know, the top, maybe 5% make it. Um, so I encourage, you know, these young dudes to, to give wrestling a try. There's a lot, there's a lot less competition and UFC fighters are becoming multimillionaires yeah. every, every year. It's happening. Um, so, you know, just, just, just think about it. Cause you know, it starts off at wrestling and then you learn how to punch oh. and you learn how to kick. And yeah. And it could escalate to it, other yeah, things. Change your family's life. We got Tyrone on the line from Arizona. What up, Ty? What up, Tyrone? Hey, Tyrone. Hey guys. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. What's up? My man. I had a question, Mr. Jones. I know you, uh, you probably focused on that fight here coming up next month. But, uh, December 29th at the T-Mobile arena in Nevada. Yeah, I was wondering. Uh, I haven't heard anyone ask you yet, but I, uh, you have your eyes set on DC. Uh, Daniel Cormier? No, I, I don't. You know, Daniel Cormier is a, is a. You know, he's been able to do well in my absence in the light heavyweight division. I'm really happy for him uh, that he's been able to hold down the light heavyweight championship. Uh, obviously, someone has to do it, and uh, you know now he's the. Uh, He's the heavyweight champion of the world as well, oh. and I'm extremely happy for him. Um, he's you know first first fighter to ever be the light heavyweight and heavyweight champion at the same time, and and it's great, man. I think he's a great ambassador of the sport, and uh, and, and I'm glad that he's carrying the torch. He, thank you for your call, Tyrone. You're a citizen of Sway in the morning. He actually came by here, Daniel. He? Cur- What's his title now? Uh, and, so so he right won? so right oh. now he's the heavyweight champion and the light heavyweight champion. He came by here and, and, and talked about that. Mentioned you as well. I think somebody asked him, was he going to fight you? I guess people want to see their favorite fights. And mm-hmm. here's what he had to say in in uh in terms of w- with you. The reason it was so disappointing is because I wanted to obviously fight in a clean sport. I've done it my whole life. When you look at the fight on paper, you hold all the physical advantages anyways. I mean, I'm 39. You're 30. Barely 30. Wow. You're 6'4". I'm 5'11". You know, I'm cutting 40 pounds to make 205, whereas you don't have to lose as much weight. You have all the advantages to begin with. Why do you need to try to sway it in your favor even more? Mm-hmm. Give a guy a shot. You know, I started this thing at 31 years old, and uh, that's why it, like, pissed me off. <laughs> So is that the big money fight that everybody wants to see? Is, is it bigger than this fight, even though this fight people feel like one person won, should have won, should have lost? It, that, that The fight with DC would be bigger than this even. D- uh, D- Real quick, DC also mentioned his last, he wants his last two fights to be Lesnar and then you. Okay. So he wants yeah. your, you to be his last to, fight. To ever. fight me again, yeah. So uh, DC is talking about like uh, this this uh, steroid allegation that, uh, that I just worked my way through. Um, I just, Daniel Cormier was my last fight, and after the fight, um, our drug testing committee found uh, traces of a steroid in my body. Um, come to find out the amount that was in my body, uh, talking to the drug testing agency that drug tested us, they said that it was like taking a pinch of salt and throwing it into an Olympic-sized swimming pool. They said there was such a small amount in this guy's body that there was no way scientifically that it could enhance his performance. Um, so... So after our last fight, mm-hmm. uh, even though they had this small trace of steroid in my body, I still got disqualified from the fight, and I, and um, and uh, and uh, the reason why I'm back a year later is because you know through through science they were able to tell that it was a total mistake how mm-hmm. this got in my body and mm-hmm. and didn't help my performance at all. So Daniel Cormier, instead of just saying, "Okay, guys." 
well, now that it's proven that this didn't help him beat me and, mm-hmm. and this was an accident on his part, instead of just saying, you know, the guy's just a good fighter, he's a better fighter, you know, he comes up with all these excuses and saying that, you know, uh, that I, I won straight solely because of steroids, which is just not true, simply not true, factually not true. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it's it's something I'm going to have to deal with. It's going to be maybe a, leaving asterisks next to the rest of my career, mm. but but it's totally fine because, you know, this next fight I got coming up, every other fight I've, I've always passed my drug tests. Right. And, uh, and, and you you just can't stop God's blessings, man, at the end of the day. Amen. So, <laughs> so. So that would, you wouldn't fight shining. him again, but with like Floyd and, and what they did with the um, boxing and going, would you do that? I would absolutely love to do that, man. Okay. Yeah, Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the way McGregor came over to boxing. And, yeah. Yeah, I would love to do it. I think McGregor made like $80 million in that fight. Yes, he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> fight anybody. I I'll mean, fight well. okay. I think I'll gladly take an L for $80 million. <laughs> Deontay Wilder, you can hear me. Yeah, right. Go come, ahead. come knock me out and get me paid, bro. <laughs> come, and, come and get me paid. Yo, we love you here, John. Hey, thank for you, real. Thank you so much show. for coming back to see oh, us like, and hanging out with us. And don't forget, citizens, there's so many calls. People just want to literally give you props. You can. Oh. Well, somebody wants to know if you have sex during training, but oh, that's all another the time. thing. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> but everybody just wants to give you props and just saying what's up. Uh, Antonio Lance, Will, Victor, Matt, and they're calling from all Thank over you Oakland, guys. Iowa, New York, North Carolina, Washington, D.C., wow. Cali, Michigan. Wow. Just love all over the place. Love guys, guys, leave a message and I'll play it back at the uh, end of the show. And don't forget the fight December 29th, uh, Paradise Arena in Nevada. All right. Uh, mm-hmm. Make sure you check it out and support and rock with them too. Follow him on Twitter, IG at Johnny Bones. Let's get it. Up next, who we got, DB? The one and only Alex Winter.